Hi everyone, good evening. I hope all of you are doing good. Welcome back to the reading practice sessions. I hope I'm audible to all of you. Good afternoon. I'm so sorry, actually there was, I was facing some network interruptions. So I thought to fix that and begin and I hope it's fine now. <clears throat> Let me share my screen with today's test. And here you have your first question on the screen. Please make sure that you are timing yourself. We will be doing the reading blanks first today. As we discussed that we will do uh, reading writing in one week and reading blanks in one week. So alternative weeks. So here is our first question for reading blanks on the screen. Two minutes for this, not two and a half. Make sure that you are timing yourself for each question and then you're posting your answers in the chat box so that I get to know uh, where your problems are, what things you're missing and we can talk about them, we can discuss them. And then post your answers, please. And we'll have a discussion on each question for two times. Your time starts now for your first question, two minutes.
All right, should be done. The first one is the only answer that I've got a uh, confusing response. Others are very, very good. So this says the growing availability of the COVID-19 vaccine in 2021 dash the hope that this year would dash better than 2020. So an understandable topic. So growing availability of the vaccine, the vaccines were more and more available in 2021. This dashed the hope. Most of you have written this gave the hope and some of you have written this offered the hope. So whenever we talk about future, we always know that we cannot be sure what they have used is this year would be better than 2020. So would means in the past, in the 2020, we were hoping that 2021 will be better, but it was just a prediction at that time. So gave is more of a certain uh, word, gave is more of also a general word, which means when we physically give things to others, actually handover is when we use the word gave. But here, because hope is an abstract thing, in our verbal language, we normally say she gave me a lot of hope. I have given her hope. But when we write, gave is not the right word to write because hope is abstract. Hope is intangible. Hope is not something that we can see and touch. So gave cannot be the right word, right verb for this noun hope. And better is offered. So we'll say that offered the hope that this year would dash better than 2020. So would after any modal can, may, could, would, should after every modal always comes first form of verb without S. So the first forms of verbs were turn out, come up. But again, this turn out we discussed last week, I think that whenever we are talking about future, that how something is going to happen in the future, we use the verb turn out because we don't know how things are going to unfold. So that this year would turn out better than 2020 because it is yet to happen. Within a week of the new year, Dash, a violent mob stormed the US Capitol in an if effort to disrupt the certification. So the previous sentence was saying that we were having positive hopes about the new year. And then, but in the new year, a negative thing happened. So we have a blank with two commas and there is a contrast between the sentences. So all the hints, um, tell us that the answer should be however because we are going opposite from positive to negative we need a connector between two commas and however fits in both the situations so however within the week of the new year a violent mob stormed the u.s capitol anger and confusion continued dash the year as scientific information about vaccine efficacy and boosters was often accompanied by debates over mandates and workers rights they say anger and confusion continued not in one particular month of the year or two months or three months it continued dash the year the whole year these things continued the whole year means throughout when we do not talk about one specific time period when you want to say um, for the whole of the time then we say throughout throughout the year as scientific information and this, all these confusions were happening however dash all this there were also inspiring moments so again now we are shifting from all the negative things there were some good things also so that is why however has been used the contrast has already been established we don't need a connector dash all this there were also inspiring moments we need something in capitals we have in the midst of and we have due to now, due to is not possible because we cannot say due to negative things, there were inspiring moments. Inspiring moments cannot be because of negative things. So we cannot write due to, rather it will be in the midst of. In the midst of means when all these things were happening. In the same time that these things were happening, that is in the midst of. All this, there were also inspiring moments and then they have told about some inspiring moments. And then in the end, they say, what do you think were the year's most dash events? So most what type of events? So we have two adjectives, memorable and recognizable. So events cannot be recognizable. Recognize is to um, identify. But we can say memorable events or uh, non-memorable events. So memorable events would be something to remember, something that nobody can forget. And COVID-19 is one of the memorable events. So that is why we have gone with memorable events. 
come up uh, yes ranjan we use come up uh, with the word with but we can also use it without with i think it's not the only mandatory thing that we need to have with right so these are the answers the first one is uh, availability of vaccine gave us hope but gave cannot be used in writing it's very general word so we'll say offered us hope because it was not sure it's about futures so that is why we'll say offered the hope so how can we write since in the first uh, blank just print since is used with time so sign uh, time should be written after since means since 1921 means from 1921 otherwise since is used in place of because here because doesn't fit and we don't have time written after the blank so since cannot come second one based on grammar with all the modals come first form of verb without s and whenever we talk about future we go with the word turn out because things are yet to happen so we say how they are going to turn out then however was i think good with all of you and i'm very very happy that you have started to select the right connectors when we turn negative or uh, rather i should say when we turn uh, contrast from the previous sentence and we need a connector with two commas we should go with however and there was no one specific time of the year so we have gone with throughout the year means every month every day these things were continuing and then uh, due to is not possible because due to negative things we cannot have inspiring moments so we will say in the midst of means in the middle of all these negativities there were some good things also happening and in the end we are just asking what according to you were the most memorable events because they are both good and bad ones so they are just asking a random question what do you think is the most memorable for you any other confusion anybody in this question thank you navjeet shifali so here you have the second question on the screen 2 minutes to answer this and then share your responses please
Okay, enough time. It's a small question. And I'm very happy with the answers. Not following two. Following doesn't come with two, Shivali. Yale University, a private university, New Haven, dash of the league schools. So it's right, one of the league schools because we are uh, picking one out of all the schools. So we'll say one of the league schools. It was founded in 1701 and is the third oldest university in the United States. Yale was chartered by the colonial legislature. The sentence is complete. Chartered is the verb. So we need adverb here, something that ends with L-Y. And when we look at the options, we had only one. So we'll say it was originally chartered by the colonial legislature. One or two of you have written it was also chartered. How can you say also? Have you been given any other sentence which says it was chartered by this? And only then you can say it was also chartered by that. So also comes when you are repeating the same thing again with uh, what you have already said with the other person. So it was chartered by Mr. ABC and it was also chartered by this organization. Then only you can use also. But here the charter thing has not been discussed before. So you cannot go with also. So it was originally chartered by the colonial legislature of the Connecticut at the collegiate uh, school and was held at Killingworth and other locations. 1716, the school was moved to New Haven, and in 1718, it was renamed Yale College in dash of a wealthy British merchant and philanthropist, this person. So when we name a thing or a university or any organization uh, in respect of a person, we always say in the honor of that person. So it basically means to honor that person, we are naming this institute, organization, or a thing uh, with that person's name. So in honor of a wealthy British merchant who had made a series of donations to the school. So that is why we wanted to honor and we named the college with his name. Yale's initial curriculum emphasized classical studies and strict dash to orthodox. So here, one or two of you have written strict following two. Following doesn't come with two. The right word is adherence to. Adherence means to follow, but two comes before uh, follow. So like you, we generally use the word adherence, adhere to the rules. So two comes after adhere. And what is the meaning of adhere? To follow the rules. So you have to differentiate between what is the placing of two before the word or after the word. So to follow and adhere to, that's, that's the meaning. And also to follow something or to adhere to something, adhere to is more academic than to say to follow. So we use generally, we use the word adhere with uh, adhere the rules, adhere with the law, adhere with the uh, regulations. So in that sense, we use the word adhere. Is there any very in person? If not, would you please tell about this kind of sentence? Is there any very in this sentence? Very means? Connecticut is the uh, name of the place. Uh, Muhammad. It's not a verb or an adjective. It's a name, proper noun. So basically, Ranjan, what I can explain about the first sentence is this is a way of writing when we don't use helping verb and we say um, Yale University is a private university in New Heaven, which is one of the uh, EV League schools. So in place of is and which, we use commas to connect the pieces of information without helping verbs. So you can understand this as Yale University is a private university in New Heaven. So the description is not given with the helping verbs. The description is given with commas instead. Uh, I, yeah, verb. So I, I hope this, this explanation makes sense. This is a formal way of writing when we can skip in uh, helping verbs and we can put in uh, multiple commas to uh, put the information together. And generally that piece of information is the description of something, yeah. No worries, just breathe, have a great class. Okay, moving to question number three, two minutes for this and then share your answers.
good well done i was just hoping that nobody selects sectionally in the first blank but there are people doing that okay can anybody name the sections of the world how many sections do we have in the world do we have sections in the world or do we have territories in the world see sometimes we have to select the answers just based on our general knowledge of the topic that what is a word which goes with this particular topic like they say the world today is divided into more than 190 countries so the world is divided into countries because we have borders like this is the area of this country this is the area of that country we have borders and that is the uh, division so th these are not sections we have territories marked that this territory is named as india this territory is named as australia so it's territorially is the answer based on just the thinking the world today is territorially divided into 190 countries dash of which a uh, dash of which possesses a national government so possesses is with es means the verb has s that means the noun has to be singular and some of you have selected some here some means singular if the answer would have been some then here the verb would be possess not possesses it is possesses means your verb is with s and what is a combination if the verb has s the noun cannot have s means the noun cannot be plural and you have still selected plural noun which is some the answer was each because each means singular one each of which possesses a national government that claims to exercise sovereignty and seeks to compel obedience to its will dash its citizens so what basically they mean that each country has a national government we understand this that claims to exercise sovereignty and seeks to compel means force obedience to its will its means country's will dash its citizens so the citizens have to dash the will of the country citizens have to obey the will of the country so it will be by its citizens because who has to obey the obedience will be by its citizens this i think some of you did not understand what exactly you needed and that is why you have written through should known and this and that kind of words so that's why i'm explaining the sentence that it meant that each country has a national government and that government seeks to compel obedience to its will by its citizens that every citizen has to compile every citizen has to obey the rules regulations the will the constitution of that country so by its citizens governments can be classified in any number of ways so again they have used a uh, possibility can be means it, there are no, numerous options possible governments can be classified in any number of ways for example they dash be classified by the number of rulers and there are other ways also governments can also be classified by the other method so they dash be classified we will say they should be or they might be it should be they uh, might be because we are just taking possibilities here should is we are giving suggestion so we are not give a suggestion that the government should be classified by this or the government should be classified by that they are not asking suggestions here rather they are telling us that there are numerous of ways it can be by this it might be by that it could also be by this so these are the numerous methods so they might be classified by the number of rulers does distinguishing government by one from government by the few uh, and from government by the many governments can also be classified by mode of succession for example ascension to government leadership may follow the rules of hereditary succession or it may be can you see here may there is no suggestion going on there are possibilities going on it may be dashed through elections or by force so with b comes third form of verb it may be determined is the only third form we have so we can be going with determined yes it may be determined through elections it means the government and we all know this method we all live in uh, what kind of countries no first answer me mohammed what kind of countries democratic we live in democratic countries and we know this method of voting and bringing the government to power 
so it may be determined through elections so the government is determined by elections in our countries right so these are the answers you can put your doubts now by the time i repeat so the first one is territorially because territorially means by land and we know that the division of the world is on the basis of land we have marked boundaries and the second one uh, the will has to be obeyed by the citizens and then there were just possibilities it can be by this method it may be by this method it might be by that method so the, these were the options and in the last we said the last option is it may be determined through elections so uh, determined means we can find out the ruler by election so through elections or by force no we cannot use sectionally mohammed what was the first question i asked name the sections of the world we don't have any sections of the world but we do have territories in the world so territories means an area of land is called a territory so we have boundaries we have uh, borders that this this is the border of india and pakistan india and uh, the other country so boundaries means we have marked territories that this territory belongs to this country we don't have sections as a word in geography to explain the world okay question number 4 2 minutes for this and then post your answers
are we done? Yes, we have. Okay, let's discuss. So this says the 1990s witnessed two architectural events that helped revitalize existing architectural environments. Uh, some of you have written two important architectural events. It's still fine to say they were important. Some of you have written remarkable and some of you have written subsequent. What is the meaning of subsequent? One after the other. How do you know they were subsequent? That they happened one after the other. There's no information given in the context which tells that they happened one after the other. So subsequent cannot be the answer. It was out of important and remarkable. What is more academic? So remarkable is more academic. So remarkable can mean important, something which is worthy of a consideration. So it, it's more or less can be used in place of important. Important is a very general word. So you can go with remarkable. That two very good architectural events happened in 1990s. So that can be remarkable. That helped revitalize existing architectural environments. The first of these came with the fall of the Berlin Wall on November 9 and the dash reunification of Germany. So here the answer is the subsequent because it is subsequent is used as second thing happened because of the first thing or the second thing happened after the first thing. So this meant that the first of these events came with the fall of the Berlin Wall on November 9 and the subsequent means after that the reunification of Germany because the wall broke or the wall came off only then reunification can happen only then things can unite if the wall is no longer there so it was based on context. After selecting Berlin as the capital of a new Germany, the government held a numerous architectural dash for various buildings. So they held numerous something means the answer has to be plural. And that is why all of you have selected competitions because there were two plural nouns. We had competitions and occasions. Occasions cannot be held. Competitions can be held. So a very good choice here. Numerous competitions were held for various buildings and neighborhoods throughout the city. Of all of them, the most important was that for this. The sentence is absolutely complete, so we just need uh, an adverb. And out of the options, we had two adverbs already and perhaps already doesn't fit. We cannot say out of all of them, already the most important was this. So already means before that. So we can say perhaps the most important, perhaps means maybe, probably the most important was that for this person, the former no man's, sorry, this place, the former no man's land between East and West Berlin and the center of the new city held in 1991, the competition dash in buildings being constructed over the next decade and more. So this competition dash in buildings over the next decade, and that is why the answer is this competition resulted in. This is a collocation. The word resulted comes with the resulted in. And if you want to put lead or led, it has to be led to. First of all, it has to be past tense. It has to be LED. And then it has to come with to, not with in. So led comes with to and resulted comes with in. That's the right combination. Now you can put your uh, doubts or questions if you have any. The first one is you could have thought of important events, but remarkable is more academic and it can be used in place of uh, important. So we can go with that. The second one was completely based on context that first the wall came off and then re, uh, the uni reunification happened. So then is represented by subsequent here. The third one, we needed a plural noun and all of you have selected the correct one competitions. And we cannot say out of all the competitions uh, already important was this. No, we'll say maybe the most important was this one because we are not sure it happened long back. And the competition resulted in number of buildings. Uh, led to the construction of buildings is the right way of writing with the word led. Resulted in number of buildings is right. Any confusions, anyone? All right, so we have the last question for reading blanks, number five. And then we'll start with three orders. Two minutes for this and share your answers.
i think guys it's enough time that you should now be knowing the difference between is and has and those who were there in the last week's class ranjan i'm not expecting an answer like this from you so is is only denoting present tense when something is happening at the moment in present times and has denotes something which started in the past and is still continuing in the present it's a very easy distinguish that you can make only present or starting from past till present so a person david copperfield who has already died you cannot say that this person is being described that now we are describing that person as a holiday or whatever we are describing him doesn't matter that we are describing him now no so the first answer will be has been described because we started describing him like this in the past and till now he is described so only is is wrong it has uh, this person has shows that it was also done in the past and till now we do that so has been uh, described as a holiday from these larger social concerns and most notable for its childhood chapters which the critic edmund wilson described as an enchanting vein which he had never quite found before and which he was never to find again largely for this reason and for its autobiographical interest it has always been dash his most popular novels plural so it will be it has always been among very well done so among is always used with plural nouns among means one of the plural things so it has been one of his most popular novels so one of means among his most popular novels and was dickens own favorite child it on it incorporates material from the autobiography he had begun but soon abandoned the sentence is complete begun is a verb so we need adverb here and when we look at the options we had recently so recently shows past so we can go with that he had recently begun and but soon abandoned and was written in the first person which was a new technique for him david differs from his creator in many ways however though dickens used many early experiences that had meant dash to him so those experiences had meant dash to him so any experience this experience means a lot to me is how we say this in in active voice so in passive voice the experiences that had meant more or much what is the difference between more and much so don't just randomly select anything ask yourself that how should i differentiate more is we too and more is used with than t h a n than second forms of verbs are used in comparisons when you compare two things and you have the word than written but here we are not comparing any other experience many early experiences that had meant a lot to him so a lot means much to him no that's wrong prabhjot more for quantity and much for quality is absolutely wrong much more most are three forms of verbs much in first form a uh, more for co uh, comparison second form and most for the best out of all when you compare more than two things then you use um, most it comes with the more comes with than and much comes without the and then which we don't have here so these experiences had meant a lot to him so a lot means meant much to him his period of work in the factory while his father was jailed his schooling and reading his passion for maria and his emergence from parliamentary reporting dash successful novel writing so his emergence with the word from we generally say from this to this we don't have to here but we are talking about a person's profession that he started as parliamentary reporting and he turned into successful novel writing so that's why we'll go with into and also with from to and into makes sense not from and from doesn't make sense from and within from and soon doesn't make sense so it will be his emergence from parliamentary reporting into successful novel writing so he started from reporting and then turned into novel writing right so these are the answers the first one is this is not just present tense the person has already uh died so we started doing started describing him as something this in the past and now we are continuing that thing that's why it is has been described number 2 one of most popular novel so one of means among recently begun because um 
the sentence is complete began is a verb so we need adverb which is recently meant a lot to him so a lot means much and the last one he emerged from parliamentary reporting into novel writing more can be used with more uh, both quantity as well as quality it only has to be assured that it, you are using it in comparisons so you can say there is more water in this jug because you're comparing two jugs so you're comparing quantity you're comparing two jugs and you can say more water otherwise you can say this is more sweeter than that more sweet than that so you're comparing quality in that case so it doesn't matter you're talking about quantity or quality but it has to be comparisons when you use v2 okay all right so let's move on to reorders and here you have the first question on the screen you will get 2 minutes to post your answers and then we'll have a discussion
ici. Three were very easy and those who have got the first one correct, you should have understood the story. Happenstance works in many ways. That was the first sentence. And then there was a very clear sequence of events going on. The second sentence was A because it was just explaining what do you mean by this short first sentence, happenstance uh, works in many ways. One, so when you say in many ways, you're talking about counting, countable things. Many ways and then you pick up one out of them. One is the observed event, means one way is the observed event. The invention is the way the mind seizes upon an inconspicuous occurrence. So this was the hint here in many ways and one is the, one is the means one way is the. So you missed that, those who have not made this pair of D and A. And then um, the third sentence was C because First, you will say something only, then you will start explaining. So C says that the best known of these is Alexander Fleming's role in the discovery of penicillin. This is your topic. And then you start explaining the discovery of penicillin. The story starts as one day in 1928, some mold drifted through an open window in a London hospital and landed in Flemington's Petri dish, where he had placed the culture of Staphylococcus bacteria. Okay, very difficult bacteria. This is the story. So he saw some mold in a hospital in his Petri dish. What Fleming did next? So what he did as a response, when he saw, what he saw was the mold efficiently destroying the germs. So he looked through the microscope and he saw that the mold was destroying the germs. So that is what the creation of penicillin began with that unlikely turn of events. Unlikely means something which was very unusual to happen. So if normally um, you see a mold in a dish, you will just try to throw it away. But what he did was he observed that what was the mold doing? So that was very unlikely for a person to do. That was very unthoughtful for a normal person to do, to bring a microscope and see what was the mold doing. So that is why they, they have referred it to that. I thought you, I think you got confused with the best known of these. You were trying to reference this word these, but it's okay that you, that it's not very easy to understand these here. These rather is referring to these many ways only, but out of that, when they say one is the observed event. So out of all the observed events, they were picking up the best ones. So that is why uh, they have used the word these here, referring to the observed events. So one of the best observed event is this one. But you could have got the hint from this that you will first mention Alexander Fleming's role in the discovery of penicillin. This is the uh, title of the story. You are going to explain the next three sentences. Right? So I hope it's clear now. And the second question on your screens. Two minutes for this and then share your response.
who has missed this word this exchange of values okay the first sentence was b kind of a definition commercial transaction is the core of legal rules governing business dealings then d the most common types of commercial transactions are discussed below involving such specialized areas of the law and legal instruments sorry as sale of goods and documents of title you cannot say this exchange of value you have not talked about exchange of value before this sentence so a has to come first because here you talked about what did they exchange the value for they serve to transmit economic value such as materials products and services from those who want to exchange them for another value usually money to those who need them and are willing to pay a counter value so then you say it is the purpose of the relevant legal rules to regulate this exchange of values first you will talk about exchange of value only then you will refer to the exchange of value and the common types of commercial transactions were also these that some transactions which are for exchange of another value some uh, for money and some for counter value so these were the common types of commercial transactions so even if this was uh, the context was difficult to understand just go with references don't miss the word this that these those they are very very important in the orders so bd is correct but ac should have been the second pair okay the third question and the last one for the orders for today and then we will start the reading writing blanks two minutes for this
Okay, should be done. This was easy. You have still messed it up, some of you. The first sentence is, see, Indra Nui assumed the title of CEO in October 2006 and the next year became chairman of the board as well. The second sentence is further explaining the uh, rank of uh, her taking the chairman. So she was the fifth chairman. In the first sentence, we just said he, uh, sorry, she became the chairman. So then we'll say the fifth chairman. So further information, elaboration. The fifth chairman and CEO in PepsiCo's 42-year history, Nui, was the first woman to lead the soft drink and snack food giant and one of only 11 female chief executives of Fortune 500 companies. This was the first two sentences connected together. The first one saying she was the chairman, the second one saying she was the fifth chairman and a bit more elaboration. Then the third uh, was E, where they say, although analysts expressed surprise at the timing of Nui's appointment, because we are still referring this sentence with the appointment, which the first two sentences were talking about. As chairman, many praised the skills that she would bring to the job. So the, these were the things happening still at the time of appointment. The first two sentences were also at that point of time. So then they say she continued the strategy of making PepsiCo a well-balanced consumer products company that was less reliant on sales of its flagship soft drinks. She also pursued, so also was very, very important. She continued one strategy. She also did another strategy. She also aggressively pursued international expansion. So this should have been correct. This was easy. The word also was a very clear hint. And then this appointment was a very clear hint. And then there were two things that she did. All the other things were, uh, the, the three sentences were talking about what was happening on the day of appointment or uh, information related to her appointment. So these kind of questions are pretty easy to conquer in the exam. So be a bit more careful about them. All right, let's begin with the uh, reading, writing blanks. And we have the first question here on the screen. Big one. Two and a half minutes, you have to solve this and then you have to share your answers in the chat box.
Okay, anybody left to post the answer, please do that. Normally available, what is abnormally available, Janni? This is as shoes became more common in ancient Egypt, the first ones were simple sandals created mainly to dash soles of the feet from rough surfaces. So what do we match with from is to protect the feet from rough surfaces. We cannot say prevent. So prevent is to stop the feet. Safety, the soles doesn't make sense. Uh, shelter is used for roofs, basically in terms of houses. So we'll say protect the soles of the feet from rough surfaces. The easiest way to make shoes in these ancient times was to use materials that were dash available including tree bark, leaves, and grasses. So in earlier times, these were the most easily available things because there used to be um, jungles everywhere. So uh, what can we say to these willingly available? Willing is with your own wish. Normally or abnormally, interested available, readily available is also a collocation. So don't those who don't know this, please note this down, Muhammad, you as well. Readily available is used when you want to say something is extremely easily available. That is called readily available. So they say among the ancient Greeks, sandals were woven of similar plant materials, but the Greeks also varied the process by tying small pieces of wood dash with dried grass. So this is another uh, a technique that they uh, test in the exam, whether you know uh, that collocations can also be written in broken forms. What I want to say is, what is a collocation? Tying together with these three words come together. Tying together with something or tying together at least is a combination. But broken form means tying comes and then certain uh, words come and then comes the second part of the collocation, second word of the collocation. This is also a way collocations are used. So they are not always written together in the way that um, next to each other together can also have few words in between and then comes the other part so it's possible so we tie together so it's it makes sense you take piece of wood you take some grass and you're tying them together to make a sandal so that is tying together small pieces of wood with dried grass in years later they made sandals with leather from the hides of animals the first Greek shoes were purely functional but over time, most were dyed and dashed to make fashion statements. So second, uh, third form of verb they have used, we'll also go with past form of verb. So shoes were dyed and shoes were celebrated. The spellings are also wrong and the meaning is also wrong. Uh, this is not ED. This is not ED. So only one ED form dyed and decorated makes sense also. Women began to wear soft and closed leather shoes and these dash fancy in the later years of the Greek civilization. What tense they have used this simple past tense. So we will also follow simple past tense. And these grew increasingly fancy in the later years. Has cannot come with plural option. These cannot come with has because these is plural and has comes with singular. They haven't used uh, ing form. They didn't say women were beginning to wear. So we will also not say were growing. And the same way they haven't used past perfect. So there's no need for you also to do that. They have used simple past. Follow simple past. Keep the things easy and simple for yourself. These are the answers. Protect from makes sense. Also, readily available is a collocation. Tied together is a collocation. Third, uh, dyed and decorated makes sense together. And the last one, they followed simple present tense. So we also followed sim sorry, simple past tense. So we also followed simple past tense. Now, together is not an adjective. Together can be an adverb. But what I said is tied together is a collocation. Adjective is something which tells you the quality of uh, a noun. Together is not telling us any uh, quality. Together is just telling us uh, an adverb. How the things were tied, they were tied together. So that's an adverb. Right? All good with this question, all of you?
Okay, so here you have your question number two on the screen and you have two and a half minutes to solve this and then post your answers, please.
okay this should be done and i think the the rule of the first blank we discussed it a few weeks back uh, those of you who have selected wood is it because you remember the rule or you have just made a guess govind prabjot what is your reason of selecting wood did you remember the rule that is one uh, grammar rule that a way of writing i should say of a, a, a sentence structure good prabjot very good so if you have word and then a comma with a condition please make sure with a condition if there were something and something it would be possible so that is the combination if you will start a sentence with a conditional sentence starting with if and were then after the comma you will always put would so please note it down those who did not know or those who forgot these that's why i keep on telling you keep on writing the things and keep on reading them them every single day so that some some things are very unusual you know they will come back after maybe 10 practice tests and we will not be using them every single day so it's very hard to remember them so when you will be reading them on daily basis they will somewhere stay in a part of your brain and they will help you recall the explanation so please note it down if there's a conditional sentence with were you will uh, put the second uh, part of the sentence with would it would invariably be reading comprehension beloved reading comprehension a friend to nearly every teacher of language but what makes it so special why is it so revered by both students and teachers alike to answer these questions it helps to know just what reading comprehension is reading comprehension is defined as a level of understanding of a text it dash comes from the interaction between the words that are written and how they trigger knowledge outside the text so this dash comes from this means this level we haven't talked about any level this definition this understanding or this reason so in the previous sentence yes we gave a definition we said that reading comprehension is defined as the level of understanding of a text so do we want to say this definition comes from interaction between words do we have definitions coming from interaction between words no rather we were actually referring to understanding that this understanding comes from that whatever we understand from reading it comes from the interaction between the words that are written and how they trigger knowledge outside the text humans are thought to have a set reserve and established threshold for dash and absorption of information so for dash and absorption they have used a noun absorption we will also use a noun attention and absorption attention is a noun attentive is not a noun attending is not a noun alert is not a noun so even if sometimes a uh, language becomes a bit tricky to understand just go with your grammatical understanding attention and absorption of information commonly referred to as processing capacity this being the case it is generally believed that proficient reading depends on the ability to recognize words quickly and dash so again we need an adverb we have to recognize the words quickly and we have to recognize the words dash difficulty we are we are looking for a positive word fluently fluently has nothing to do with reading fluently is a verb for speaking quickly is already written so what are we left with is effortlessly we want to read effortlessly which makes sense also if word recognition is difficult students use too much of their processing capacity to read individual words which dash with the ability to comprehend what is read so they uh, here have used the noun uh, students use their capacity to read individual words which dash with their ability so this capacity using too much capacity dash with their ability so what is the noun is singular so we need a verb with s so this thing this use too much use dash with their ability so we need s form and we have two s forms this interferes comes with the word with inhibits means shows uh so it, this is not something related to show here so we'll say this thing interferes with their ability because they're using too much capacity on reading and this thing interferes with their ability to understand because a lot of their energy is used in reading so they cannot comprehend the things in the correct way so it will be interfere with 
So these are the answers. The first one is based on a rule, which is if you have a conditional sentence with were, you will always use would in the second part of the sentence. And the second one is this understanding. We were referring to uh, understanding. This understanding comes from the words uh, which are written. And the third one, we needed a noun and there was only one noun in the option. The fourth one, we want to uh, recognize words quickly and we want to recognize words effortlessly. Fluently has to do with speaking. Difficulty is not an adverb. And the last one, interfering with. Interfere with is a collocation. Yes, Ranjan, interfere with something. We generally say don't interfere in my work. Um, that's one way of writing interfere. Interfere with when, you, when the interference is between two things. Then you say interfere with. Right? All good with this question, everyone? Okay, so here you have your question number three on the screen. Two and a half minutes to solve this and then post your answers, please.
ओके मनु संधु हैप्पीनेस इज द रीजन ऑफ ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस रीजन कैन बी अंडरस्टूड एज वी एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ हैप्पीनेस तो रीजन हैज टू मैच विद बिकॉज वी डोंट एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ हैप्पीनेस वी एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ लाइफ कंडीशंस आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द प्लेनेट अदरवाइज वी कैन नॉट एग्जिस्ट वी एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ एयर वाटर थिंग्स लाइक दैट so the right answer was yes goal uh, happiness may be the primary goal of human existence every day we try to be happy we we work so that we have money because money brings happiness according to us or whatever we do it's not about just money the work we do sometimes give us mental peace uh, so the goal basically is to stay satisfied calm composed happy so that is what they are relating it to Philosophers have wrestled with the concept of happiness. Legislators create laws to support citizens' rights to pursue happiness. Television, radio, print, advertisers uh, assure consumers that various products will guarantee happiness. So this is what they are relating it to. Interestingly, people have a dash to believe they are happier than their neighbors. So people have a dash. With a, we need a noun. So out of the options, what are the nouns we have that can come with a? people have a tendency to believe tendency is a noun which means likelihood possibility people have a validation to believe validation is to uh, validate something to say that yes what the other person is saying is right that is validation people have a significance with significance we generally don't use the word a uh, because it will make it countable which is not possible and intention cannot come because for that we need an it's a vowel so that's why we'll go with people have a tendency people have this likelihood to believe they are happier than their neighbors and they are dash about their happiness in the future they are looking about optimistic they are happier about their happiness they are satisfied about their happiness they are optimistic so whenever we talk about future the word choice has to be very very uh, carefully selected so they are optimistic about their future optimistic is to stay positive about something which is yet to happen so because we are talking about future so the right word should be optimistic that they think positive about their future most people assume that they will be happier a decade from now than they are today clearly everyone from writers and philosophers to legislators and the average person on the street thinks a great deal dash happiness so here i am happy to see those who have selected about um and if you will say that you selected about after reading the next few sentences and i will be even happier so what makes happiness so important why be happy so these are the things we think about happiness that why is happiness important uh why a person should be happy this this is thinking about happiness not thinking of happiness thinking of happiness would match when you we are when you are just thinking about the uh, various events or situations in your life when you were happy so that is thinking of happiness but thinking about is why one should be happy what can make a person happy that is about happiness happiness plays a significant role in enhancing good health dash immune system promoting longevity so what forms of verbs they are using is continuous form ing promoting is with ing enhancing is with ing improving is with ing so we will also look at ing forms and we have two boosting the immune system or strengthening so boosting basically means encouraging and strengthening means to make something stronger and for immune system we don't want to encourage our immune system we will rather strengthen our immune system so that will be strengthening the immune system boosting is generally we use with confidence boost confidence in a person because that's related to encouragement abdur what explanation did i give for not selecting reason as the first answer so i said if uh, you are selecting reason as your answer then the meaning of selecting reason will turn out to be that you say happiness may be the primary reason of human existence which means human exists because of happiness and we don't exist because of happiness we exist for happiness that is our goal that is not our reason for existence reason for existence is air water if they are not there we cannot exist 
right i hope it's clear now any other confusion anybody please post your questions so goal is used for something you want to achieve something you don't have or maybe you have less and you want to increase it or you want to uh, attain something in the future then you can use the word goal tendency is likelihood general uh, thought that is tendency whenever you talk about future again your word choice has to be bit specific so optimistic is to be positive about something yet to happen great deal of happiness is things that has that have already happened and great deal about happiness because of the next questions because of the next sentences uh, we come to know that they are talking about happiness tendency means likelihood and the last one was ing with the verb so we had to boosting means encouraging and strengthening means uh, to make stronger so immune system has to be strengthened not encouraged so that is why it will be strengthening all right so let's move on to the next question number 4 the second last one for today Two and a half minutes to solve this, and then post your answers.
are we done? The third one was a bit confusing and I think that's why. Preeti, no, sorry. Who I read has written already. Even I thought of, you know, putting somewhat. But then I read the complete sentence, which I think you didn't. So the man in the iron mask, political prisoner, famous in French history and legend, Dash died in the Bastille in 19, sorry, 1703. So we are talking about a human being and for human beings, we use the word who, we don't use which for human beings. Whom is used for reference and who for introduction. And here we are introducing, not referring. So whoever doesn't also make sense when we are introducing. So we'll say who died in 1703 during the reign of Louis XVI. There is no historical dash that the mask was made of anything but black velvet. So historical evidence, we need a noun. Exhibit is not a noun. Philosophy about the mask made of velvet. There's no philosophy behind that. And there cannot be historical verification that the mask was made of velvet. We are talking about there's no evidence that we have that the mask was made of anything but black velvet and only after did legend convert its material into iron. The identity of the man in the mask was a mystery before his death. So, and from the 18th century on, dash suggestions as to his identity were made. So they are saying that before his death, even there was a mystery that who this person is. So we could put still only if they say the identity of the man in the mask was still a mystery after his death. Then we had to have the word after, that even after he died, we couldn't solve the mystery. So here they have used the word before his death. So we'll say already a mystery, that even before he died, this was a mystery. And after the death, obviously this remained a mystery. So somewhat is used as an adverb when you want to say more or less, that it's okay, 50-50 something, then we use the word somewhat. So what were the, uh, sorry, where were we? A, a mystery before his death and from the 18th century on, dash suggestions as to his identity were made and we have a colon after that. Colon with commas means these are the various uh, suggestions. There were too many suggestions, not one, not two a lot of suggestions they have given the examples of. So we'll go with various suggestions as to his identity. Handful means only a few of, and a few also means not many. So a few is used when you want to frame the sentence in a bit negative way, when you want to say not many suggestions were made. You don't want to say like there were different opinions, different suggestions by the people. That's a positive way of framing the sentence. That's why we'll say various suggestions were made and then they have listed these suggestions in 1711 in English nobleman, 1745 this person, and then 38 in this person. These were all the suggestions made. Of the dozen or more dash, only two have proven tenable. So uh, of the dozen or more, again, we need a plural noun here and something that can be proven. We have only two plural options, hypothesis and logics. Logics are not proved. Hypotheses are something which are assumed and then proved. So we say out of the dozen or more hypotheses. Hypothesis is when you make assumptions. So all these were the assumptions made. Some people said he was this. Some other people said he was that person. So all these out of all these assumptions, two of them were proven to be logical. That's why it will be hypothesis. So logics is wrong. Uh, what is the difference between singular and a plural hypothesis? If they say S-I-S, that will be singular and S-E-S is plural. So please note it down. This comes with some other words as well. S-I analysis. So analysis with S-I-S is singular and analysis with S-E-S will be plural. So that is a good uh, they, the Most of the times they give this uh, as one of the questions so that you know whether when to use IS and when to use ES. So Abdul, if we'll say that was somewhat a mystery before his death, that will mean that after the death, the mystery was solved. So we want to say that it was somewhat a mystery means not properly a mystery. What, what meaning did I say for somewhat is 50-50. 
So if you say I have somewhat completed the assignment, means I have fifty percent completed. So we cannot say it is incomplete. So if we'll say somewhat a mystery means fifty fifty was a mystery, fifty percent it was solved. That will mean somewhat here. Now we cannot use a few instead of various. A various is used when you want to frame a positive statement, and a few is used when in the blank you want to say not many. So if you want to put a few, fill the blank with not many. If it makes sense, then you can go with a few. All right. Is it okay, Muhammad and Abdur, with you? Handful means a few. Not many again. Right. So here is the last question for today. As they have given plural name. Yeah, handful doesn't mean various. Tamanna. Handful means only a few, very little. That is the meaning of handful. Very few. So the last question on the screen. Two and a half minutes for this, and then post your answers.
Okay. Okay, tell me what is the meaning of two pre World War first times? Two times pre World War first. What were the two times, or how many times were there pre World War first? Some of you have written two periods pre World War first. What time period? How do you know five years, two years, ten years? What period of time it was? So read the complete sentence. They say American financier and industrial organizer, one of the world's foremost financial figures, during the two pre World War One dash. So two should be some specified things before the first World War. So what can be specified things? Two decades. A person cannot be present in the two generations. That's impossible or like very rarely possible. Two periods doesn't tell us what time. Two times before the first world war. Two periods before the first world war. Period can be two year period, one year period, 15 year period also. So what exactly is the time? Two decades before the first world war makes sense here. At least it completes some meaning. JP Morgan was known for reorganizing businesses to make them more dash and stable and gaining control of them. So he was reorganizing businesses to make them something. And what can we make a business? Positive thing because they have used stable, which is a positive word. So he wanted to make the business profitable is the word that we use in corporate sense and business sense. So he wanted to make the businesses more profitable and stable and then he gained control of them. He reorganized several major railroads and became a powerful railroad magnate. He also financed industrial consolidations that formed General Electric, U.S. Steel, and International Harvester. Dash consolidating and controlling several railroads and industries, J.P. Morgan led in resupplying the U.S. Treasury's gold reserve. So that means this, this was one side, one um, type of things he used to do, and then they have shifted to the other side of things that he was also involved in US Treasury's gold reserve. So how can we connect these two together? In addition to the first thing, in addition to industries and railroads, he was also into some other business. So that is how we connect two different uh, stories together. Adding on doesn't make sense because you cannot say adding on railroads and industries, he was also in US Treasury's gold reserve. Simultaneously means what, Muhammad? At the same time, simultaneously, if you use in the first, you need a comma, first of all. And how can we say simultaneously? Simultaneously connects when this sentence is same as the previous sentence. Simultaneously does not connect two pieces of information written after. It connects one written before and one written after when simultaneously is in between. And simultaneously is used in respect to time at the same time. So we say in addition to this sector, he was led in this sector also, which was U.S. Treasury's gold reserve during the depression that followed the panic of 1893 and organized the financial community in dash a financial collapse after the market panic of 1907. So again, they have used a positive um, sentence. They say he organized the financial community. So if they have, if he has organized financial community, why will he do that? To dash a collapse, it he will never do in or in the favor of collapse. He will do some organization to prevent a collapse. So allowing doesn't make sense in avoided a collapse, in averting, in preventing. So averting and preventing means the same. Preventing is a more general word. Averting is more academic. So we'll go with averting, which means preventing only. So he organized the financial community in avoiding a financial collapse, in preventing a financial collapse after the market panic in 1907. He then dashed control of many leading financial and insurance companies. So he then was gaining, he then acquired, had gained, could acquire. So he then acquired, they are in simple past tense. So we will also follow simple past tense. He organized this thing. He then acquired control of many leading financial and insurance companies. So following the simple past tense again. 
right so what we learn from this question is the checking of positive word or negative word is very very important do we need some word to favor a thing or we need a word to go against the thing that's important and understanding the use of connectors is very very important those who don't know what is the use of a connector which connector connects previous sentence with the next sentence and which connector connects the following two pieces of information please go through the grammar videos it's very very important to understand each and every connector individually and then it will be easier for you to select them right any other confusions in this question anyone um ranjan we could not say in addition to we need a noun because they have actually framed it in a nice way like you can say in addition to writing a novel i am also interested in writing a book so in addition to writing a novel so we cannot say that writing here will serve as a noun writing a book together will be the the subject here right so the first one in the first blank we needed two something two dash before the first world war so can we say two times before the first world war two times means how many times something happened and this is not that two periods before the first world war so what length of the period two five year periods two 10 year periods two 20 year periods two 50 year periods periods can be any time span that is why we have to go with two decades before the first world war because it is specific two decades means two 10 year periods 20 years before the first world war right so these were all the questions that we had to do today and i hope this would have been helpful to you and you would have learned something noted something and you will keep revising whatever you have learned and noted which mock tests prabhjot so the mock tests are generally marked by the system but if you are giving the mock tests at the center then you can get some one to one face to face feedback as well just just as an overview feedback on what you need to work on but it is checked by the system so any tutor who are you whoever you are in contact with you can ask that tutor to um, go through your mock test and give you the feedback no simultaneously comes when two things are happening at the same time not opposite sentences that is however 70% mohammed 70% is what you need in your blanks and at least 50% in your reorders to score 70 right anything else anybody